moving on in terms of uh, big presidents visiting uh, other countries, uh, Putin has arrived in China for a meet with Xi Jinping, the Chinese leader. Uh, that'll be interesting. <laughs> um, you know, the, the problem with, again, reporting news is you don't want to get involved in conspiracy theories. I think from the moment those dreadful attacks happened, Kev, I think people thought that Hamas were not alone. Mm -hmm. So we believe, well, Iran's already said it'll get involved. I would, I would love to be aware of what Putin's making of all of this. Does this take the world's eyes off the atrocities in Ukraine? Mm -hmm. uh, would I be slaughtered if I said the following? Is he involved in any... I've, I've, nobody knows. Well, but the world, Mr Cambridge, we're back to you. Jeez, man. It does affect you. Every part of this affects you. We can't bury our heads anymore, I don't think. Uh, in terms of uh, Putin, you're, I think you're quite right, Jeremy. He'll be loving this. Yeah. I mean, just how much uh, Russia is involved behind the scenes, you know, maybe chucking a few rubles uh, to, in the wrong directions, left, right and centre, we don't know. Uh, but Putin will be enjoying this drama because who's talking about Ukraine at the moment? Absolutely. Another, listen, it's another example. And, and, and I guess also, Kev, I think the point is you can get to a point where you just feel so depressed about what's going on. You know, there's conflict in the Middle East, there's the Ukraine war, our country is crumbling, you know. But yeah. somehow you have, to, you have to find an answer and you have, to get, you have to get up and get on with your life. But I think the world will watch. I think absolutely, I think you nailed it. I think Israel has a right to avenge the atrocities. I think anybody who has those atrocities against them as a country or an individual got has to, a right to try to, and avenge that. To. However, the world needs to watch because humanitarian-wise, we need to get it absolutely right. Yeah, just before we move on, I'd like to say everybody's talking about, oh, this uh, uh, you know, Israel's already guilty of uh, war crimes, a collective punishment because it cut the water and the electricity off. Well, that is part of its operation to invade Gaza, and uh, they didn't start this. And uh, if you want to talk about war crimes, can I refer you to what happened nine days ago? The beheading of babies, the raping of grandmothers, the execution of people let me tell on you, their let doorsteps. Me, let me tell Those you. are war crimes. Let me, let me tell you what I read. Ten babies murdered and burnt, yeah. strapped together. Yeah. Are, you, are you telling me that that, that's, that is not about... Um, that's, that's not religious, that's not about land, that's not about a two-system state. That is atrocity at its worst. That is terrorism. Yeah. It's the same for ISIS, it's the same for anybody like that. And, I, and I, that has to be dealt with. But I will not shy away from the fact that whilst that is happening, mm. there will be victims on both sides. And that is the... But, but instead of everybody saying, maybe, you know, Israel, war crimes... Look at the reason this has to happen. It's Hamas's war crimes we're talking about. Israel is responding to them and it has every right to respond to them. So no more of this nonsense about Israel's war crimes. Uh, we just hope... And I like, the IDF, the uh, Israeli Defence Force, very disciplined army, uh, they will do their level best uh, to save as many civilians as possible. But the inevitability is civilians will die. They already have. This is an awful unfolding yes. situation. And back here, of course, the ramifications continue apace. 